Welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the criminals problem. This problem is found in section 2.1 of the Puzzling Adventures of Dr. Echo. So, it goes like this. The police have captured seven criminals, conveniently named with the first seven letters of the alphabet. So we have Alice, Bob, Courtney, Dan, Ella, Frank, and Gary. When they're questioned by the police, Alice admitted to having known all other six criminals. Bob said, I know five. Courtney said, I know four of them. Dan said, I know three. Ella said, I know two. Frank also says two. And finally, Gary says, I know one of these other criminals. So what we're going to do is try to discuss this problem with graph theory. So part of a graph is drawn below. We don't have a complete graph just yet because there's these little spokes coming out. We're meant to connect those with what the uh, criminals have said. And so let's read part A. It says part of the graph is given. The uh, vertices are representing criminals. And if a criminal knows another criminal, an edge will connect those criminals. So we're going to try to use this partial graph or try to fill it out below to try to discover if it's possible for all seven of the criminals to be telling the truth. And we're going to assume that there's no creepy relationships here. It's, it's a two-way relationship. A knows F and F knows A. They're not spying on each other or you know, creeping on each other. Okay, so we've made some of the connections. Like A said, yep, I know all of these bad people. So we connected all of the possibilities to A. And then B said five. And we don't know who B knows. We know that B knows A, but we don't know which other criminal is not known by B. Because B knows everyone except for one other criminal. And the same with C. We just drew some spokes coming out of there. We meant to connect those, but we don't know where exactly to connect them. So in a previous video, we discussed something called the handshaking lemma. It said that if we're to build this graph and have edges between all the vertices, so make all of these connections that could possibly be made, so all the little spokes would be filled somehow, it must be the case that there is an even number of odd degreed vertices. How about we just call them odd vertices? There's an even number of odd vertices. Let's count up how many odd vertices there are. So A is even with six. B is odd because it has five. C is even. D is odd. It has three. And E and F are both even at two. And G is the other odd one, saying that I know one other of these criminals. So it is not possible to make all of these connections and build a graph because we have an odd one, two, three odd vertices, an odd amount of odds. So no such graph is possible to be, be built. So someone must be lying. So our concluding statement, it is not possible to have a graph with three odd vertices. So therefore, someone is lying. Let's look at the next part of this problem. So in part B, we had some further investigations. And it's been determined that exactly one of the criminals is lying. So in the previous part, we discovered that someone is lying, like one or more, and now we know it must be exactly one. So six truth tellers and one liar in the bunch. The criminal that is lying will always claim to know fewer criminals than they actually do. So let's think about this sentence. It's saying that the one criminal that is lying is not going to sit there and go, 
oh yeah, I know all the bad people, I'm a very bad person, you caught me, and I know all these other terrible folks. It's going to lie in the other direction. It's going to say, oh, I know three, but that criminal might actually know five. They'll lie to go smaller, they won't lie to go larger. So in addition, we know that Frank is telling the truth. So let's underline that. Somehow we've discovered that trusty old Frank is telling the truth. So which of the criminals could possibly be lying? Let's think of this problem in two cases. We know the least about Gary, because Gary just said, I know one other person. And there's six possibilities for who that person could be you know, known to, to Gary. Of course, A did say, I know Gary, but we don't know if Gary is lying or not. So we know the least about Gary in terms of the connections that come into Gary. So we would gain the most by assuming something about Gary. So we have our two cases. Gary is either telling the truth or Gary is lying. So let's start. The criminal that we know the next most about is A, and A knows everyone else. So A must be telling the truth because A's number couldn't be any smaller. Right? A said six, and the actual number could be larger than six, but it can't go any larger than six. So first, A is telling the truth. So let's make up a little code to put a check mark in our diagram when we've discovered a character is telling the truth. So we know that Alice is telling the truth and Frank was trustworthy, so Frank also gets the check mark. So the criminal that we have the next most knowledge about is criminal B, because B said, I know five others, and B's actual number could be either five or six. Five if they're telling the truth, or six if they're lying. So how about we ask ourselves, could B be lying? If B lies, then B knows everyone else, including B would know G. But that would make G a liar. And G, Gary, we're assuming is telling the truth. So we have a contradiction with B being the liar. So B must be telling the truth. Let's write that down. So if B lies, it implies that G is also lying. But this creates a problem because now we have both B and G lying, and there is supposed to be exactly one criminal that's lying. Okay, so there's our contradiction. When B lies and we assume that, then we end up with two liars and there's only supposed to be exactly one. Whew, this is hard work for a mathematician. We've got lies, lying, lie, and liar all used in a short little bit. Okay, so next we want to connect B to everyone that you know, B is connected to, everyone that B knows. B knows exactly five others. What B is saying is, is the truth because it's a contradiction that B lies. So B, uh, we'll get the uh, you know, red check mark here. It's a contradiction with B lying. And also in our assumption here, in this case, we've assumed that Gary is telling the truth. So Gary also gets the check mark. So B connects to all the others. And that's the proper connections for B. All right, so we've narrowed the criminals that could be lying down to E, D, and C. Let's shift our focus to C now. C knows at least four others, but the connections are already made for F, G, A, B. There can be no more connections there. So C knows E and D. In particular, we just really need to focus in on C knowing E. So therefore, we can next look that it must be the case that C knows E. As soon as C knows E, we've discovered a liar. 
there's exactly one liar, and E is lying. So we'll put a X on E, and you know, therefore we've discovered E is lying. Okay, so that takes care of case one. Let's take a look at case two. In case one, it was forced that E was the liar. Could there be any other possible liars? So in case two, we're now assuming that Gary is lying. So Gary could be the other liar. When Gary's telling the truth, it forces E to lie. What could the possibilities be if Gary is lying? All we have to do here is try to find an example where Gary is lying. So see if you can do this. Try to make connections. You have to make Gary connected to more than one other so that everyone else is telling the truth and Gary is that exactly one liar out of the bunch. Pause the video now and see if you can make those connections and I'll give you some solutions in a moment. Okay, so here's one possible solution where Gary is telling a little bit of a fib, said that I know one other, but actually knows A and B. And we should verify that everyone else is telling the truth. A is telling the truth because in this scenario, A knows six others, B is one, two, three, four, five, so B is telling the truth, C, one, two, three, four, is telling the truth, D, one, two, three, is telling the truth, and both E and F are telling the truth at two. Can you think of another way? I'll give you another solution in a moment. Pause the video now and give it a try. Okay, so here's another example where G is lying much worse than before. Now G is saying, I know one, but actually knows one, two, three, four others. And we can verify in the solution that everyone else is you know, telling the truth from what they originally said. So it's certainly possible that G is the exactly one liar as well. So our final answer, the criminals that could possibly be lying are criminal E or criminal G. Now, of course, we were told in the problem that F uh, wasn't lying. E and F would be symmetric other than the fact that we are told that F doesn't lie. So if we weren't told that F um, is a possible liar, then of course it, it could be F as well. Thanks so much for checking out this video. We'll see you on the next one.